here with Satu Vanska, principal violin, and Glenn Christensen, who's a violinist both from the Australian Chamber Orchestra. And we're really lucky today because they both have Stradivarius violins, the only two Stradivarius violins uh, which are in Australia today. Um, Satu, I'd love to start with you. Could you tell us about what makes your instrument so special? So what makes this violin special is that uh, Stradivarius was an, just a great violin maker living in Cremona in the um, 1700s, uh, from the late 1600s to 1700s, he was making violins. And um, Cremona was a place where all great violin makers were at the same time. There was a sort of a cluster mentality of violin making and, and uh, competition and uh, sharing of knowledge of violin making. Uh, and Stradivarius is the most famous violin maker from that time. And uh, because he worked extremely hard, he made about, he made over a thousand instruments of which, you know, so 450 violins have survived today that are still in the circulation in the world and being played or some of them are in a museum. So what makes them great? The sound, um, the beauty of the object itself um, and the time that they, the, the, the instruments have survived about, you know, so almost 400 years and that is something that makes these instruments uh, just really beautiful to play and time has proven that they are just great instruments. From a player's point of view, what's great is that it has a lot of uh, sound qualities that are, you know, it's like the Ferrari of, of violins, if you like to think that way. You can play it on any part of the instrument, in any string, anywhere, and it will always be strong and, and uh, responsive. Um, and what these violins also have not just being amazing tools for us violinists, but it also has a personality of its own. So this violin is a very sort of a bold uh, violin that sort of tells me how to play it as much as I'm, I'm playing this violin. Yeah, that's something that the, the violin telling you how to play, it's something that I've really learned after um, playing on this violin for about two years, I guess, or a bit more, um, that no matter what, what you give in, it's always got something to give back, which is something I, I really love about playing these sort of instruments. And yeah, it really teaches you, I think, how to play the violin better. And I don't know, maybe there's something mythical or, you know, you think about who's played it before you and, and maybe that's embedded in the instrument or something like that. But, you know, I just think they're just wonderful instruments to play and we're, we're super lucky and fortunate and, and grateful as well to be able to play them. Yes. So this violin um, was called the X Hilton before it came to Australia, because it was owned by uh, some um, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hilton in the 20th century in, in the UK. And it's been renamed the Belgiono uh, instrument because of the family that purchased it here in Australia, which I'm of course extremely grateful of. And so what makes this instrument, again, makes them great is that they are as objects alone, they have a great value as in um, the, the co value of collection as an artifact. It's got a value even without the sound quality of it because they're just um, great antiquities. Um, but then there's the wonderful bonus for people like myself and Glenn who are violinists that we actually get to play on them and the sound is also really special. And what I find always really fascinating about playing an instrument like this is that we travel the world uh, playing these things. We share the, this, you know, the special character of these instruments and, and, and the sound of it um, with all the audiences that come and hear us. And that, that's something I think really special. And when we go to a school and play in front of children and they have access to the sound of this instrument and to tell them that this is something so old. It really, even an adult is, I think, very, it, it stops you for a while to think, you know, there's this something that has survived so, so many years and yet um, here we are and it's gonna survive us and hopefully yeah. it's gonna survive us also. And, um, and that's just the way these violins, you know, humble you, I guess.
Could you tell us about how they impact the sound of the ACO as a whole? I mean, the ACO's got an extraordinary collection of instruments, probably one of the best collection of any orchestra in the world. So, you know, we've got Amartis, we've got these two Stradivari, we've got a Guarneri del Gesù that Richard plays. So I just think having these instruments individually that make the most extraordinary sound, when you put them all together, it's just, again, it's like a, a, a group of Ferraris starting up all at the same time, you know. But, um, but there's also a real beauty to the sound. It's not just power, it's, it's the sound quality um, and the colours that we can create as an orchestra that I think is, is really amazing. Yeah, we are very privileged. Thank you. <laughs> Terrific. So I think uh, we'll now hear a sample. I feel like we're better hearing from the instruments themselves and trying to describe their, their timbre qualities. I'm sure it'll be a wonderful way to sum up our live stream. So we're going to hear from uh, we're going to hear from Sartre and Glenn. We're going to play Leclerc, which is a French duet. <laughs> 